<clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? It's Coach Mack. Play fast football. If you take a look in the uh, description box, I'll have a link down there for two of the companies that support us. Game Strat Football, uh, which is a sideline replay system, the most advanced, fastest sideline replay system on the market right now. We've used it the last three weeks for our sideline replay system, and we like it a lot. And then uh, Just Play Football Sports Solutions, or Just Play Sports Solutions for uh, playbook and software solutions for your kids to make playbooks and game plans and, and uh, a lot of things on the digital software side that are really good, really advanced out there. So I uh, appreciate those two companies supporting Play Fast Football and taking care of me. So if you look in the description uh, of this video, I'll have some links down there for those companies. Today we're going to talk about uh, back end guys fixing front end guys. So we're going to talk run fits a little bit. We're going to talk how the back end has to fix the front end. All right, we are in um, we are in week four of our season. We got off to a two and one start. Uh, opened the season with a real good opponent that um, that handled us fairly easily. Um, they outplayed us, outcoached us, did a great job. I think they're going to be a really good football team this year. And then we bounced back with two good wins the last two weeks where we played. Uh, we played some pretty solid offensive and defensive football, and now uh, we start our district play this week with um, one of the better opponents in our area that uh, the last five or six years has done some really, really good things with their program, and they're always difficult to uh, to defend um, with the things that they do, and it's going to be a great challenge, and um, we're looking forward to the challenge, so I hope everybody else has got off to a good start this year, and, and uh, hopefully your season is... Uh, gone the way you want it to. If not, hopefully you can bounce back and rebound a little bit. So today we're going to talk a little bit about run fits and back end guys fixing front end guys. A lot of times when you talk about run fits, you're talking about linebackers and D linemen and how you have to play certain things. And to me, I think you got to tie all three levels together depending on the type of defense you play where you've got to get your fits figured out between your D line, how you're going to play it, your linebackers, how you're going to play it, and then anybody in the secondary that's involved behind them, you got to figure out how you're going to play those guys. So Normally when we talk to our guys, one of the things we talk about is, hey, second level has to fix the first level, third level has to fix the second level. So we know how we would like to play certain things, certain blocks, certain run schemes. We know how we want to play it, but we also have to be able to play the picture in front of us. So sometimes our second level guys have to be able to fix our first level guys based on how we fit things, and then our third level guys got to be able to fix our second level guys based on how we want to fit things. Okay, so... All right, first drawing, I got 21 personnel to our 3-3 stack quarters defense the way we would play it. All right, so if you were to look at, let's say, just a power run to the front side, all right, and let's say for argument's sake they want to arc release and block your down safety there, all right, they want to work a double on the nose and maybe get back to the rim, all right, and then they want to try and get the tackle down on the mic. They want to try and kick the five technique, and they'd like to pull and wrap on our linebacker there, and they like to... Uh, Hinge the rush on the backside. So for us right away, we got to set the edge hard with our left safety right here. We got to try and get that tight end at the line of scrimmage, all right, and meet him at the line of scrimmage, or maybe try and bring him back a yard on his side uh, of the ball. But we got to set it aggressively with our outside arm and leg free, all right. Off the down block here, we need our end to try and wrong arm. We'd like our end to get inside off the down block and wrong arm the sniffer, make the ball bounce a gap wider. All right, off of that down block, look, our stack linebacker knows right now when he gets that down block, he's going to replace that end, all right, and try and be skin to skin tight in that C gap. So now if we do it right, fullback on the five, the end under the fullback, the guard has to bounce, the guard's now got to go to the line. When the guard bounces to the line, we would like the line to spill the ball, all right, so that our free safety in quarters defense can run the alley between the line and the left safety. Okay, we normally we send our nose one gap to the other and then we read the guard away. So if we send our nose strong A gap here, our Mike linebacker would read the guard to the backside. So he's going to take care of that A gap, but if that guard pulls, we're going to add a body. So now when that guard pulls, we're going to take our Mike and we're going to play him hard underneath the block of that tackle. Make the tackle come off, all right, make the tackle get flatter, all right. And then depending on the angle of that tackle, there's times where we might let our mic go over the top. If that tackle's real flat, we may let our mic go over the top. If that mic was climbing higher, or if that tackle's climbing higher, we might put our mic underneath right there. And then on the back side, depending on how we're playing our ram, there's times where if we think the center's going to double the nose, we may try and shoot a backside gap with our ram. 
More often than not, we're going to try and take the ram. We're going to try and overlap the mic to the front side. So when that guard pulls, we try and add a body by overlapping all right, the ram to the front side, especially if they have to double the nose. If the center is going to try and come off for the ram and he's going to come off flat, we want to overlap the top of that. And then when we overlap, if we're playing quarters on the back side, we need our right safety to play behind the ram linebacker. All right, so if the ram linebacker is going to be a guy that runs to overlap, our right safety needs to stay behind the ram linebacker. Now, that, when these pictures don't always happen, what we have to understand is we have to understand how to fix each level. So for argument's sake, on the first, the first situation that occurs, off the down block of the tackle, all right, here, if our five technique doesn't run on, so if our five technique is up the field and he is kicked by the sniffer, all right, my, my lion, my left stack backer, who is trying to off the down block of the tackle, he wants to replace the end. As he goes to replace the end, if the end is kicked, my lion has to go back underneath to fix that because he is behind the end. We know we want the end to wrong arm. All right, but you don't always get things wrong armed every now. So if it's not wrong arm and our end gets kicked, now we need our lion as a second level player to understand he's got to go back under that. Okay, and now our free safety should still be able to run the alley. All right, if the end is kicked but the lion is under, if we can get that ball to bounce, if the lion can possibly spill the puller and we can get it to bounce, now we need our free safety to still run the out. All right, so that's a situation where with your end kicked, your lion, when he goes to gap exchange, sees the color of your end being kicked and dives back hard inside because you don't want two bodies in the same window or the same hole. So we know we're supposed to gap exchange off of that block, but if we don't get it gap exchange and the end gets kicked, there's no need for the lion to run to another colored jersey. If the end is kicked, he's got to dive back inside. All right? Now, another scenario you might get is let's say you do get it wrong armed. All right, so let's say you do get off the down block, you do get it wrong armed here. All right, and now when the pull comes, your lion goes too wide. He doesn't scrape paint with the helmet of the five technique. He doesn't get skin to skin, cheek to cheek, and he goes too wide. And now the puller ends up kicking the lion out. Okay, now your free safety, who's a third level player, your free safety as he starts to come down and run the alley has to realize he can't just come down fast, hard outside. He's got to be under control to understand that if the lion is too wide and gets kicked, now your free safety's got to fit back underneath that. So each level has to fix the next level. All right, so second level fixes first, third level fixes second. On the back side, if we decided that we wanted to play that ram, maybe up a little bit tighter in a 40, all right, and maybe hails it three yards so that if he gets this pull, we want to try and possibly shoot the backside gap on that pole. Well, now our right safety needs to understand if our ram is going to be backside trying to shoot, our right safety probably needs to play faster over the top to help overlap the mic because now if our ram is behind, then our right safety needs to be over. All right? If our ram is an overlap guy, then we want our right safety playing slower. If our ram is going to shoot a backside gap, then we want our right safety playing a little bit faster because if the ram gets picked off, trying to shoot that gap, we'll lose that cutback window if the, if the right safety all right, goes too fast over the top. So second level fixes first level, first, third level fixes second level. All right, so from the same set, you'll also get the counterplay. All right, so you'll get pro, all right, you'll get sniffer there, tailback, and now from the same set, you'll get the counterplay, where it'll go back the other way. So, now to the other side, you're going to get the down blocks from the other side working here. You're going to get the pull and kick, all right, by that, and then you're going to get the pull and wrap by the sniffer there, and you're probably going to get some type of hinge and maybe block back out on the force. Maybe they'll scoop the five and try and get up however they want to do it. All right, so again, to the front side off the down block, we've got to try and get this rush in under. If we get the down block, our ram assumes the rush end's going to spill, so our ram needs to go tight, scrape paint with the rush. If the rush can spill this, it's going to make the puller go a little bit wider. 
Now we would like the ram, when he scrapes paint cheek to cheek, we want the ram to spill the puller and send the ball to the right safety. All right, if we send our nose to this A gap and our guard read that, that and our mic read the opposite guard, when he gets that down block, he's going to slam that A gap right now. All right, so if he can slam that A gap and try and keep that guard from going across, now the tackle would have to work all the way back, all right, to the line. So if we get it wrong on tier, scrape paint here, spilled, we send it to a free hitter, right, in a perfect world. On the back side, depending on how fast the lion plays, if we let the lion run and overlap, the free safety's got to play slower behind him. Okay, so in, in our quarters concept, if the, land, if the lion is going to overlap, we've got to play the free safety slower behind him. If we wanted the lion to be up and possibly be a guy that could shoot the back side of the counter play, now our free safety might have to play a little bit faster as an overlap player because our lion is playing behind it. Okay, now to the front side again. You got to understand, we know what we want to happen on paper, it doesn't always happen. All right, so if the rush in gets kicked, so off of this action, this guard, if the rush in gets kicked, so he's off this and he's kicked. The Ram linebacker who squeezes tight cheek to cheek, if he sees that kick, he's got to duck his head back under there, all right, and make sure he understands that if the rush is kicked, I can't go cheek to cheek outside of him. I got to work, scrape paint cheek to cheek. He's kicked. I got to duck my head back inside. And then our right safety that's playing quarters behind it has to understand how to fit off the ramp. If the ram spills the puller, my fit is there. If for whatever reason the ram is kicked by the puller, now the right safety's fit is back underneath. So the ram fixes the rush, the right safety fixes the ram. That's how we have to do it. Each level has to fix the level in front of them. All right, so you have to be able to talk to your guys about second level fixing first level. All right, third level fixing second level, especially if you are any type of quarters team or any type of team that involves your safeties in the run fit. Okay, now, we also have to talk to our corners sometimes. All right, because when we, when we play, for us, when we play teams, and we can do it either way, but when we play teams that give you nub surfaces on the backside, what you have to understand is how you're going to gain a guy in the fit because by formation they're trying to make you lose a guy. So by going twins to this side, all right, if you're a split field coverage team or a four, four you know, like we used to be an old 4 2 5 team, we still play the same principles. If you play this side in a quarters concept or a two read, all right, so normally if you're playing quarters and they come out with two removed, you're Check or adaptation to that is to read. Well, when you play to read, your free safety is now out of the run fit. All right, he's out of the run fit. Your right safety is aplexed. He's an extra player on runs to him, but he's a full guy on runs away. So on runs back to the nub side, he really isn't a factor. So they've taken your quarters defense and they've removed your free safety from the fit. You have to gain a guy. The way we do that on the back side okay, is when we are playing some type of sky or cloud defense and we're playing to a nub set, the high half player has to play it more like a quarters concept and get involved in a run fit so that when they remove a guy from the run fit, we end. So now, if you were to get the power play, again, to the front side, let's say it's out on the safety, all right, it's double to the ram, down to the mic, okay, it's pulled there, all right, and it's hinged there, and it's kick the five technique. So now the left safety is setting the edge here, okay, trying to set the edge on the tight end firm at the line of scrimmage. We want our end to get under and wrong arm. We want our line to scrape paint tight and spill the puller. And now that corner has got to show up as your quarters player. So we have to talk to that corner now about how to fit, how to play at eight yards plus your feet. Tight end's the only player that can really threaten a half. If the tight end doesn't release and he puts his hands on somebody, all right, then we might have to be able to fit. Now we've got to tell this left safety when the tight end puts his hands on you, you better make that a man scheme and don't let him go. Win with your outside arm and leg free, and don't let that tight end go anywhere, because if he cracks and goes, our corner's gone once he sees hands on. But you've got to gain a guy. When teams go twins, you have to gain a guy if you're a quarters team. 
You've got to gain a guy back into the run fit. You're trying to get nine in the run fit if you can. They take the free safety out, you've got to gain another guy. Now, if you're not comfortable with your corner doing it, then you're going to have to make your corner the support player, and you're going to have to play your corner here, all right, and then your safety here, and now your corner has to set the edge on a tight end, and your safety's got to come down and fit. But whoever that fitter is, you've got to talk to them and let them know that they're fitting the alley between the force player and the linebacker. But if the linebacker is wide and kicked, now that alley becomes back under there. So now we have to talk to the backside and up player and let him know how to fix the picture in front of him. All right? If the end is kicked here, your lion's got to fit back under. So as he goes to scrape paint, he's got to go under because the end got kicked. Now you need to run the alley through here, all right, and make sure you understand how to run the alley between the corner and that linebacker. All right, so if we sent the nose here and read that guard, that guard pulled, we'd go tight underneath, overlap the ram, free safety now the fold player is the guy playing behind the ram because the free safety playing two read is kind of out of the fit. All right, so when you're talking run fits and you're talking about spilling and you're talking about how to gap exchange, and if you spill, you've got to have another guy go over the top. So if you scrape exchange, spill, and a backer goes over the top, and he spills the first puller, so you spill, all right, your end spills, and then your backer spills the puller, now you've got to figure out how you're going to support it behind that. All right, if either one of those guys don't get it spilled, now you're wasting your time running to a spill theory, all right, to where if you don't get a spill theory and you run to it, now the ball goes right down in a vertical running lane because you've got guys running blind, because you think it's going to get spilled. The guys that are fitting off the scrape exchange have to play with their eyes open so that as they go down tight to scrape paint, if that thing is kicked, you better go back under because it makes no sense to scrape exchange say, Coach, he's supposed to wrong arm, I'm supposed to scrape exchange. Okay, down block, he doesn't wrong arm, why are you going to run outside? The picture's in front of you. You can see the end in front of you. So you fix how the end plays. And then the safety that's behind the backer Coach, I know that he's supposed to spill the puller and send the ball to me as the free hitter. Yeah, I know that and you know that, but as you're coming downhill with vision, be a football player. If that ball doesn't get spilled, don't run outside and fit it. If it doesn't get spilled, fit back inside. All right, don't chase and run down another color, the same color jersey, all right, and put two guys in the same gap, even though we know we're supposed to spill it. We know we're supposed to wrong arm it, spill the second puller, and now get the ball bounced to a free hitter. Yeah, we know that. But if it doesn't happen like that on paper, don't play like a robot. As you're coming downhill, you fix the guy in front of you. All right, so anytime you're going to talk about run fits, you got to talk more than just spilling, all right, off of down blocks. you got to talk more than just, you know, uh, gap exchanging, even if you're a box team. If you were a box team that was going to fit a linebacker inside, all right, if you were going to box a puller and fit a linebacker inside and you've got safety support behind it, your safety, when he comes downhill, still has to fit off the block of the linebacker. So if, if you had, for argument's sake, if you just had a, a scheme on this side where with an end here, a backer here, and a safety here, all right, you got some type of down block scheme, and you got some type of kick out, and you boxed it. Okay? Well, once you box it back to the inside player, when your free safety comes down, he has to understand what the inside player is doing. If the inside player spills the next block, Free safety can fit outside. If you box the ball and the, and the next backer inside is also wide, the free safety would have to go under that. So whether you're talking about boxing or spilling, the second and third level player has got to be able to fix it. So your third level player, even if you're a team that boxes, your third level player would have to fix the backer All right, coming under because if you box the first one and then try to spill the second one but that guy doesn't spill, your third level player has to go back under and fix that. If you box it, spill it, and, and fit it, then you're fine. But you got to understand that not everything is going to happen that way on paper. Okay? So hopefully that helps you guys with your run fits. It's, it's run fits are an ever-changing thing. Every day you got to make sure you're working it. you got to make sure you're talking to your ends about how you want to play it. So your guys have an idea on paper how you want to play it. But as the game happens, all right, they may have to adjust and play it on the fly so that if it's not wrong on, I can fix it. If it's not spilled, I can fix it. So guys know how we want to fit things, they know how we want to practice fitting things, but then they also have to play on the fly with their eyes as an athlete, and each guy that's behind another level, second level, third level, everybody's got to fix one level in front of them so that we don't just run around blind all right, and go where we think we're supposed to go on paper, but that's not actually what's happening in front of us. All right, guys, so remember, 
As always, you won't play well until you play fast. I hope this helps. Good luck to you guys this week. I'll catch you next time.